Hi, it's Kate French here, clinical psychologist of Side by Side Psychology. And um, welcome, this is my first Friday Live for 2020. So I thought I would actually post into straight into our Positive Psychology for Autism group today, just because I'm talking a little bit about uh, positive starts and um, beginnings and new transitions are always um, almost frequently a really anxiety provoking time for lots of our autistic community. So I thought I'll do um, a little bit of a, um, a special one just targeting I suppose some of the issues um, that families and kids and teens will be experiencing as we head into schools beginning this week and next week um, for yeah in Victoria and New South Wales schools. Um, so just wanted to go through, uh, I suppose, a few ideas and a few suggestions of how to get things off to a positive start and um, how to know if things um, need addressing, I suppose, early in this school year. So what I wanted to talk about, I suppose, is about firstly um, getting prepared. So obviously for some families, we're already um, in the groove and have already started early this week. Myself, I've got a staggered start going on with my kids. So some of them are starting and some of them are yet to start. And I know a lot of the New South Wales schools aren't back until next week as well. So getting really prepared, so doing all the, um, you know, getting the books and the bags and lunch boxes and all those things out again. Um, but more importantly, thinking about getting that routine going again. So, you know, um, you know, have they, you know, mapped it out whether it's in a visual format or have you sort of written down you know what your schedule is going to look like whether it's with you know after school activities or tutoring or who's picking who up after the school on the different days so really sitting down and, and if your child's able to get them to sort of do a bit of a even if it's on a bit of paper just roughing out what their week looks like so they can sort of start to visualize what um, school is going to look like again after having had six to seven weeks off um, um, where routine is often really, really different from our normal school year. So helping them do that, um, or if you need to, get some visuals to help what their morning and afternoon routine is going to look like. These are incredibly useful for um, helping kids develop organizational skills. They're really useful for you not having to direct your children all the time in the morning, so making mornings more calm for, calming as well. So really yeah, getting some time to organize um, what their week's going to look like, organize what their mornings are going to look like so they are not panicked and in a rush. Definitely preparing clothes and whatever you can the night before, but certainly there still um, are jobs that children have to go through in that morning of school. So helping your kids to do that really is helping to gain their own confidence as the year goes on as well. So there are a couple of suggestions there. Then getting into, I suppose, all the new things that are gonna happen. So I think I talked at the end of last year about how transitions are really helped by having extra visits and things. So whether they've happened over the, the summer break or not, um, really taking the time to, I suppose, just give your child extra support if they are prone to feeling um, quite anxious at the beginning of a, of a new school year. And most kids are going to feel some anxiety around that. Other kids will have tendencies to to feel it more than others. So giving them that support, normalizing that new things make everybody feel a little nervous while we're using lots of energy trying to figure out, you know, what's going on, what's the same. So a really good activity if this is not your child's first year at school is by making a list, whether it's just in chatting with each other or actually writing it down, if that's useful, um, about all the things that are actually still the same from last year. Helps them to feel a little less overwhelmed. Um, and then the things that are new, again, writing those down as, as well and, and see if you can sort of come up with some ways to, to problem solve what we might do about those new things. So, Sorry about that. So um, when you've done that, that can help just to um, make it feel a little less overwhelming for your child and um, yeah, give them a bit of a plan of what to do. Now, another, um, I think, really important tip is about how we approach after school. So those first few weeks back, expect children to be more tired and more grumpy. So developing a nice routine by which um, they can just come home and relax. 
and not peppering them with questions. So if we're feeling a little bit, or we don't really know what's going on either, it can be a real urge to want to pepper them with questions and ask how they've gone and, and check in that everything's gone to plan. And, and that can really fuel their own anxiety about it. So finding a way to do maybe a relaxing activity together, a lot more side by side things. So you're not sort of face to face and asking them things all the time and just letting them know that you're there if they want to debrief about what's happened during their day or if they are not ready to talk about it yet at all. Um, and then be thinking about how you can check in with their teachers if need be and just sort of like after a couple of weeks just saying just wanting a little bit of feedback how things are going um, if your child especially hasn't been that forthcoming about things as well. So make sure you've got your teachers emails and you know work out the best way to communicate with them. So kids will take some time to settle into their new routine. So be you know expecting ups and downs emotionally, and that's all really typical and really normal. So then it's just finding about how you know that's going to take how long it's going to take for your child, and you will know them best for them to find their rhythm and groove again with a new school year. So then it's a matter of be mindful that if there are things that aren't working very well, um, by getting onto it as soon as you notice. So it's that whole thing about if we leave things longer, they don't necessarily get better. So just be mindful that don't leave it till the end of the first term before you sort of start approaching them and going, this hasn't really worked well. Especially in Victoria, we've got a really short first term, so it doesn't give you that much time to settle in. In New South Wales, they've got the 10 week term, so they've got a bit more time, um, but be mindful about giving it two or three weeks perhaps, and if things you're noticing are not improving or they're complaining about things make sure you yeah address it with the teacher straight away and just you know say you know how do they think they're settling in and this is what you've noticed you know asking for any suggestions or ideas about how you can help ease the transition a little bit better so for everybody who has started back already um, it is a really it's a great and exciting time of year because there's lots of possibility and lots of hopefulness about the year um, make sure you express that with your child particularly if they've had a difficult year last year really use language that encourages them to think about new beginnings new choices for everybody especially if they've had bad experiences that they have a tendency to sort of carry on the following year so and be really empowering them about what we can do to have our you know our best start ever and and keep working at it it's an ongoing process all of the time so I hope most people are finding that kids are um, excited about going back to school rather than dreading it. I know part of my strategy was to make sure my children get bored so they're actually beginning to look forward to going back to school um, and I was successful at doing that and I'm kind of a bit excited about going back. So and, and the other thing that I'm working on myself is not asking too many questions. Like I said well, I've got a high schooler starting this year so that's a new experience for me um, so I have to curb that curiosity and that urge and just be ready for them to share what they feel like sharing and um, not put too much pressure on you know knowing every single detail it'll come out if you find a space that they feel comfortable with and um, the discussions will go from there so um, yeah uh, hopefully your start has been useful please share any other ideas or tips that you've um, found to be really good for your young person because other people might um, get inspiration from that as well and um, I will talk to you all again very soon thanks for listening